Alright, I guess this is the fifth time I'm trying to record this video and this example and it doesn't work. Let's see if this time is gonna work out properly and I can start uploading things. Okay, let's zoom a little bit. Come on. Be nice. Zoom up. There we go. Oh, too much, too much, too much. Alrighty. Okay. Now, let's talk about finding a number in a sorted list by doing some sort of a binary search. How do we do this binary search? So let's say we have this list and this list contains numbers like 2, 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, 15. Okay, so my minimum index is 1 and my maximum index is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. Now that I know these two, I can easily find what's the mid index. My mid index is going to be 7 plus 1 divided by 2, that's 4. So that would be my mid index, which is 7 plus 1 divided by 2. In other words, maximum plus minimum divided by 2 give me the index of the mid. In this scenario, it is 4. Now let's make an assumption that I am interested in finding number mm, let's say number 9 in this list. Okay, I know it doesn't exist here, but we don't know yet. As soon as I figure out the index 7, 4, and 1, I should be able to tell whether 9 is going to be in the upper bound of this list or in the lower bound of this list. How can I tell? Well, if I make a comparison between 9 and the 8, which is the item of index mid, then I can tell whether it's on the upper or lower. Obviously, 9 is bigger than 8, so my assumption is that if 9 exists in this list, it has to be somewhere in the above boundary. So I can easily forget about the lower boundary and focus on the upper boundary. But when I'm coding, I have to figure out for the if statement for both of the cases. But for now, I just figured that as soon as I have a number, I will make a comparison between that number and the number represented by the mid index and based off of that make a decision as to whether to look in the lower boundary or upper boundary. Okay, so if I were to look in the lower boundary, my minimum index maintains being 1, so nothing changes with the minimum index. But my maximum index so these are the three numbers, 5, 3, 2. My maximum index is going to become my previous mid index minus 1. So my maximum index here is 4 minus 1, which is 3. Oops. All right. Okay. What about the upper bound? So upper bound, my... Maximum index maintains being the same, it maintains being 7. Uh, but my minimum index is going to be changed to my mid, the, val, the mid index plus 1, which is 5 in this case. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And that's going to be my new mean index. Okay? Now, does the my min, new mini, minimum index. Does the mid index change in these two cases? 
Not really. Mid index maintains being the max, which is 3 in this case, plus min, which is 1, divided by 2. That gives me 2. And in the above scenario, my mid index is going to be 7 plus 5 divided by 2. That will be 6. All right, I think I made a little mistake initially when I wanted to tackle the problem. I was under the impression to co com compute the mid, I can say 7 minus 1 plus 1. So finding the length of this list divided by 2, which again gives me 4. But in this scenario, if you do 7 minus 5, that will give you 2 divided by 2 that gives you 1 and 1 is not in the middle is not in the boundary between 5 and 7 so be careful with that don't make a uh, wrong assumption about the length of the list you're only dealing with the indices all right now that I figure out how to update my my list according to whether I should look for the upper bound or the lower bound I continue doing the same thing I compare the number that I'm looking for in this case 9 against 12 which is the mid value which is the value associated with the mid index and I realize that 9 is a smaller so my assumption is that I need to search for the lower bound and if I make another update, I will realize that the lower bound, the minimum maintains being the same, so it would be min. But my maximum is going to be my previous mid minus 1, so it's going to be 6 minus 1, which is going to be 5. So my max will become 5, my min will become 5, and that's the time I will stop my algorithm. Whenever my minimum and maximum will become the same, then all I have to do is to realize that there's only one number left. So there's no more to continue and this branching up and down, uh, sorry, lower or upper bound. So all I have to do is to make a comparison between that number and the number I have in mind. If they were the same, then I will report, um, report the index associated with that number. If they are not the same, then I'll report zero. So reporting zero is an indicator that I could not find that original number in my um, list. But if, I, for example, I was looking for number 10, then I could have returned five as the index, index associated with 10. Okay, now let's look at our code. So obviously you can tell I created three script variables and I set the min to be um, zero in this case. So I started my index from zero, but I guess I should have started from one. So I think if I do it from one, it should work the same. I'll go ahead and change it. So you set the maximum to be the length of the list. In this case scenario, you saw the maximum was seven. And then you set the mid to be the round of minimum plus maximum divided by two. Okay, why do I have to do that? Because if your number is like seven, so seven plus one divided by two is eight, but let's say this was maximum was eight. It would be eight plus one divided by two, and that will give you 4.5. So you have to round it and become it becomes four. So round is basically doing the the floor. So we have floor and we have ceiling. So ceiling is rounding on the upper bound. So three point three will become, for example, four, and floor is rounding on the lower bound, and that will become three. Round does the same thing. So round and floor are equivalent. All right, now. As soon as I do it, I will check the, the base case, basically the case where I stop doing this 
um, extra work. I'll check whether minimum becomes equal to maximum. If so, then I know that there's only one number left. So I'll go ahead and make a comparison between the number, the item that associated with the mid, in this case, mid, min, and um, um, I think this has to be the min or the max. It doesn't matter because now your min and max are kind of the same. So the item min of the list, if so, report report the min. But if you didn't find it, then report zero. Otherwise, go ahead and that's the case where you're checking. Whether you check whether you have to look at the upper bound, the lower bound, or whether the number you're looking for is actually equal to the item associated with the mid. So if it was associated with the mid, then you return the mid and you're like, oh, found you. Otherwise, if the number is greater than the mid, you have to look for the upper bound. And as we tell, for the upper bound, the max stays the same, but the minimal will be upgraded to mid plus one. For the lower bound, on the other hand, your minimum stays the same. So there's no update to the minimum, but your maximum becomes mid minus one. And that's it. Well, um, I don't know why I have these two little glitches, even though I pretty sure the code I checked the code works but I think you should make these two changes and I think the whole thing will work fine all right let me know and leave me uh, comments in case this was not completely working because probably I have to make some changes and then completely assure that this is working all right let's save